this webinar, as we know, is Advance of Science in Education, which I feel is very interesting and appropriate because science creates new knowledge and improves education in our lives. We are proud to have been able to organize this webinar with well-known and expert resource persons from Cambridge University, Assam University, Mizoram University, and of course, our teaching faculties from Government and Pai College. I once again welcome all our speakers and participants for sparing your time for this one week international webinar on advances of science in education 2021. Let's hope to have a fruitful as well as interesting time together. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now I call upon our respected principal, B. Lenhing Liana, to deliver the inaugural speech. Thank you. Today, I will all participants of internal web on advances of science in education. Science education aim to increase our understanding of science and promote scientific literacy and to shape us responsible citizens of science. The quality of improvement in building is the product of science. Broadly, our means of transportation like airplane, vehicles, ships, ropeway are the benefit of science. We can reach our destinations quickly with the help of these means of transportation. Vividly, roads are also constructed smoothly with the help of the inventions of science and technology. We use the CB bulldozer, road roller, and bitumen. Sixthly, all the medicines are the inventions of science and technology. We dare not think of human life without medical science. We could die at any moment without medicine. Lastly, think of the present internet communication, TV, radio, smart TV, computer. Products of science, we are able to hold the present international webinar on the advances of science in education. Therefore, the value of science has no limit. It develops our lives and will continue to develop till the end of the world. With this view, I open this international webinar. Thank you. We shall be hearing shortly from our resource person of the first session who is one of a kind type of person. He needs no introduction. However, to do him justice, let me read out his brief profile. Dr. Dutch Haswala Rokum currently works as a postdoctoral fellow in the Department of Chemistry, Cambridge University, UK. He is an assistant professor at the National Institute of Technology, Tiltar, Assam, since 2013. He is a recipient of CSIRNET, CSIRSRF, DBTRA, and DST Fast Track Young Scientist Award with Project. His research interests include organic synthesis, renewable energy, heterogeneous catalysis, New Journal of Chemistry RSC, Organic and Biomolecular Chemistry RSC, RSC Advances. Fuel Processing Technology, Elsevier, Industrial Crops and Products, Elsevier, Energy Conversion and Management, Elsevier, Catalysis, Litter, Springer, Energy and Fuels, ACS, to name a few. At the Department of Chemistry, Cambridge University, UK, he is presently working on the gas storage and catalytic application of Metal Organic Frameworks, MOFs. And the list goes on. So with many left unsaid, let me hand over the time to our first speaker of the day, Dr. Lal Chazwala Rokum. Over to you, sir. Ah, uh, okay, can you, yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for your kind invitation. I really privileged to be part of your, uh, today I'm going to talk about the biodiversity to protect and its current state of art and the development that has been done in my research lab at NIPCSR and 
Cambridge University. Okay, let me try to share my uh, my slide. Okay. I hope it's visible now. Yes, yes. we can see. Yes. Okay. And let me keep in full screen. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the biodiesel fuel increaser. How biodiesel is seen as one of the uh, most favorable candidate to replace current diesel, which is petrochemical. So this is the Cambridge University. Let me just try to highlight uh, the history of Cambridge University. Cambridge University is established way back in 1209. It's consequence of 31 colleges, has income of around 17,000. Let me see the comment. We are, uh, there are around 70 faculty. And all together in Cambridge University, we have 150 departments. Uh, the budget of Cambridge University is far higher than that of the budget of Mizoram. And there are approximately 174 post students at present, only in the Department of Chemistry. And approximately there are 365 PhD students at present. So, uh, University of Cambridge has any this history. It has already it was at uh, 120 Nobel laureates, and well, India has hardly five Nobel laureates altogether. Uh, apart from education, Cambridge University they have uh, 194 Olympic medalists. Well, India hardly has 28. So, be it uh, science or be it in sport, they have excel quite a lot. <coughs> quite good. Okay. Particularly in, uh, in chemistry, there are already 30 Nobel laureates. In India at present, there are no Nobel laureates uh, uh, who is born and getting Nobel Prize from India. One, there's uh, a few years ago, but he's not Indian citizen, even though he is India. So, uh, Altogether, in India, we have around 907 universities uh, and 11,000 institutes like NIT, IIT, ISER, and all. But in India, we don't have anyone in the top 200 uh, in the higher education ranking. <clears throat> uh, as in terms of ranking, uh, Cambridge University ranked top position in 2020. And in in physical science, where chemistry is part of it, we rank third position. And in QS educational ranking, Cambridge University chemistry is ranked at third position. And in 2020, there are uh, two Nobel laureates from uh, from Cambridge University. Uh, this is our library at Cambridge. This is for undergraduate students. And Today I'm going to talk about this uh, biodiesel, as I already mentioned, why we need to promote biodiesel. As you know, petroleum and non-renewable fossil fuels will be running out, will be exhausted by uh, 2050. So after that, we have to think about how we can replace this renewable energy. If there is no fuel, transportation mainly depends on Fossil fuel, which is around 98% contribution of all the transport fuel. So, to continue our uh, factory, running of the factory and transportation, our movement from place to place, we need a, a fuel, an alternative to uh, petroleum fuel, which is about to exhaust in the near future, maybe, a, uh, maybe two decades in the future. Maybe we need, at present, uh, we have been competing to make a kind of uh, vehicles which uh, have, uh, you know, a kind of very uh, fast speed and which is uh, uh, beautiful, which is uh, expensive. But if you think about the future, all these vehicles may not be quite useful because there will be no petrol, there will be no diesel, and all these beautiful things, all these beautiful cars, all these beautiful gadgets we have, is of, of course of no use. So this will basically become a big garbage, so to say. Uh, let us assume one thing. Suppose you have the, uh, uh, an opportunity to study in Cambridge University, you want to go there, but 
If there are no free wells, this will take you uh, almost uh, 82 days, 82 days, 82.75 days. So it is not really possible to go to anywhere if there is no fuel. So life basically is not uh, possible without fuel. So we are now scientists working in this field are looking for an alternative to replace this fossil fuel. Apart from that, uh, this fossil fuel uh, present a threat to our environment. Everyone knows about global warming. I'm not going to talk about it. Other, uh, I'm just trying to highlight uh, the main uh, problem associated with this global warming. In the two, as, as you can see, in 2019, temperature across the global oceans is hardly 1.7. Every time it has increased in the twin, uh, it, particularly in these recent years, it has increased drastically. Uh, global annual temperature has increased at a rate of 0 0.07 in the last since 1980, which has been so fast at a very fast rate during this day. So, as you can see, the five warmest years in 1980 to 1919 has been recorded since 2015, while nine of the in warmest years have occurred since 2005. This basically, this global warming, basically, as we know, is due to the trapping of the sunlight by uh, by carbon dioxide, which has been emitted by this fossil fuel. So, when we are working with this biodiesel, our main motive is to reduce the carbon dioxide footprint in our atmosphere. This biodiesel is known to uh, emit less carbon dioxide compared to petroleum fuel. So that is a big achievement if at all we can do it. As we can see from here, uh, in 1818, there is not much carbon dioxide in our atmosphere, as you can see from the dark color with the pointer. But in 2000 and uh, in 2016, it is already filled with all this carbon dioxide, which step over. Uh, which that the sunlight and because of this it has become so warm that even today we feel every one of us knows that every year almost every year we talk about the global warming and we are telling that uh, that mm, the, it is becoming warmer year by year so this is the real threat to the not just to us to the existence of the human society so we need an alternative to this petroleum uh, petroleum fuel so, according to World Health Organization, every year 4.9, 4.6 million people die due to air pollution. So, we need to really think about our environment, save the humanity, save our world. So, we need a kind of fuel which emits less air pollution. So, when working with biodiesel, our motive is to uh, prepare a kind of fuel which emits less air pollution. It is well known that biodiesel produces less uh, sulfur dioxide, NO2, CO, and so and so. So, why you promote biodiesel? A biofuel, uh, a biofuel is a fuel that is produced from biomass such as plants, vegetable oil, algal oil, animal fat. In short, we can tell that these biofuels are fuels made from uh, bio uh, life. Which are the product of life, means plants, vegetable, oil, so and so. These are renewable energy. It can be renewed. It, it, uh, unlike our petroleum fuel, which is exhaustible. Then, number two, we have these biofuels. They emit less quantity of gases and they emit uh, less air pollution. They are less air pollution, so to say. They don't emit. Uh, many particulates unlike our petroleum fuel. Hence, energy security and these are uh, is important for our national energy security as well as to protect our environment. So this is the rough diagram of how bio and bioenergy contributed to our world. Biomass converted to uh, well, and it, it, we can use it for transportation and pre-processing. We need biorefinery. This is also a kind of new 
a research grant which has been, you know, highly, uh, uh, highly pursued during these days. And this microbe fermentation is also kind of uh, a new research grant where they try to produce uh, algal oil, so and so, and use it as a biofuel. This biofuel can be used in airplane and uh, vehicle, so and so. So with biofuel, we believe that we can have a clean and sustainable life. So there are lots of uh, plants, uh, uh, oil bearing plants, so to say, which has been grown around the globe. As you can see from here, these are grown for biofuel, driving green, and these are grown for biofuel. These are the palm oil, which is largely grown even in Mizoram. And this is the oil palm plant uh, from Polasi district. Uh, uh, one of my research interests is to develop a kind of catalyst for convert bio uh, palm oil to biodiesel. So, uh, you know, this is also a kind of uh, research field which we can uh, pursue and make a kind of contribution in this line. Global production of biodiesel, as you can see, the total biodiesel production has increased, biofuel production has increased so drastically in this recent years, and the trend goes on. Particularly European countries, they try to be, uh, they try to lessen their consumption of petroleum fuel. That is why these Tesla car companies and all these days has grown so fast. So this is how things are going around the globe. And even in India, we try to use this uh, biofuel uh, to uh, uh, to power our jet engines. Uh, uh, this I just has already uh, tested successfully uh, biofuel way back in 2018, and you know the list goes on, and many many other companies have been looking uh, towards biofuel to replace petroleum fuel. Uh, popular biofuel, these are popular biofuel, biodiesel is one of the most popular one. Apart from that, we have bioethanol and biogas. So our main interest is the biodiesel. Why we want to promote biodiesel? Biodiesel production, it is produced from, as I mentioned, it's produced from renewable resources like vegetable oil, fat. It can be used in existing diesel and this is also very important uh, advantage of uh, biodiesel. So maybe people think about in producing this uh, solar energy or uh, bioethanol. These are also, of course, very you know very attractive uh, uh, fields uh, to replace this uh, biofuel, uh, this petroleum fuel. But the problem is that we need to make a kind of new material. A kind of new engine uh, to use this bioethanol and uh, solar energy, so to say. Uh, uh, advantage of biodiesel is that it can be used in diesel engine directly. Diesel engine directly. This is the advantage. But there is also a mix less greenhouse gas uh, grown, produced, and distributed locally. Biodegradable and non toxic, by better, it has better fuel economy as well. Fuel, fuel economy is it produces less, uh, more energy in, if we have the same quantity of fuel. So we have done some uh, research on this uh, biodiesel just to see how how relevant it is in today's uh, today's uh, 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 science. Uh, way back in 2000, uh, 1993, there are hardly one. 157 publications related to biodiesel, but in 2014-2017, we already have 3,350 uh, 3, publications in a year. And the last one is uh, just for in two days, uh, in two months, we have collected the data. Even in just two months, there are already 491 publications. This really uh, estimates the growing trend of research in Biodiesel means at present it has been highly pursued around the globe. So this is a bio biodiesel powered bus uh, which I have seen in Washington DC. I am so curious uh, to see this bus because in India, even though we started doing research, we uh, really does not use it in a real life. Uh, so 
So the, in USA, they have already started using this one. This bus is uh, powered by biodiesel. This is how biodiesel has been prepared. This is the triglyceride vegetable. Vegetables are mainly triglycerides, vegetable oil, soybean oil, whatever we use in our kitchen. So as long as we can grow this soybean oil, there will be no shortage of biodiesel. This is the advantage being renewable. So uh, we add up with the methanol and give us the uh, biodiesel. This is the this is what we call fatty acid acid methyl ester or FEM or biodiesel. There are so many catalysts used in biodiesel. I'm not going to talk about this one. And just I want to show you how things have, uh, how what are the catalysts that has been used. This is one of our <coughs> preliminary work way back in 2015. Maybe we have started this research, and uh, this is one of our first work. Since I'm not also much familiar with this biodiesel, it takes some time to publish. Before we had to publish just two years back. So here we have methanol and triglycerides. We try to prepare this biodiesel and get the glycerol. Uh, please take note of this one, glycerol. This is the byproduct of any biodiesel production. So now we are trying to prepare a catalyst which uh, is of, in the nano region, one to hundred nanometer scale. We try to prepare nanomaterials we use as a catalyst in this biodiesel conversion. So this is the mechanism of biodiesel conversion. Why nano? Nano, as you can see, water molecules is in its power n meter. This is hardly point, point 0.1 nanometer. Then we have gold. This will be uh, 10 nanometer, so to say. The most important thing I just want to highlight here is that if you have a point, a full stop, that will be 1 million nanometer. So nanometer will be very small. This, if you divide this one into 100, uh, 1 million parts, one part will be nanomaterial, nano, nano nanoparticles. So this it is very small. But why we are interested in using nanoparticles nano as a catalyst? As we know, reaction occurs in, at the surface of the catalyst. More surface gives us higher reaction rate. So if we have more surface, the reaction will be always faster. Suppose you have this uh, one meter uh, length cube. If you cut in the surface area is hardly six meters square. But if you cut into uh, two places here, here, then the surface area has increased up to 12 meters square. So, so, so and so on. So as we increase the surface area, as we increase the uh, cutting, as there are a number of cuttings, we always increase the surface area. Now, it is, the surface area has become Eight, 18 meters squared. So, from the same size, depending on the number of cuts, we can always increase the surface area. If we increase the surface area, that will increase the rate of the reaction. That is why we are working with this bar, uh, with this nanomaterial. So, these are uh, the images of the nanomaterials we have. Uh, this is more of a chemistry. I'm not going to talk much about this one since I just want to uh, make it, you know, understandable for everyone. So this is what has been done in chemistry. Any chemist will understand this one. We just try to optimize the best condition how to prepare the catalyst such that there is minimal waste and minimal use of energy such that we can reduce the price of the biodiesel. This is the reusability of the catalyst. We are using different kind of catalyst. And we are running uh, the reaction five times. Catalyst reusability is always tested when we do a kind of catalyst, catalytic reaction. Because uh, if you cannot recover the catalyst many times, the cost of biodiesel production is always higher. So our motive is to develop a kind of catalyst where we, which we can recycle many times so that it is economically cheaper, so that uh, the Final product by this is, can be sold at a very, sell at a very uh, cheaper price. That is our one of our motive to do all this catalytic, at least recyclability. Currently, by this is costlier than this year. The by this price in some part today, this basically yesterday's I recorded, 
uh, is 82.06, whereas by this stands at 105 approximately. So at present, digital price is cheaper than by digital. As long as the price of uh, by diesel is higher than diesel, unlikely we are getting to get any kind of any uh, people who are buying. People don't care much about the environment, money matters more, hence unlikely to buy by diesel unless fossil fuel has exhausted. Even in today's world, why people are promoting by diesel, even though we still have fossil fuel, as I already mentioned, we want to tackle global warming, we want to tackle air pollution, we want to depend more on energy which is renewable. So we need to convince even in today's world that biodiesel is more useful, it should be uh, more environmentally benign and we should go for it. But at, at present, as I have mentioned, the price is always higher. So the thing we need to do is that to convince people we need to bring down the uh, cost of biodiesel. How we bring down the cost of biodiesel? Am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, since I could not see you, sometimes, it, you know, I could not tell you. Yeah, see you. Uh, maybe some technical glitch is there. So I'll uh, carry on it. So uh, we need to bring down the cost. But how? Number one is that we need to use low cost catalyst. If the cost of the catalyst used for this biodiesel production is less, then the cost of biodiesel actually will become lower. This is our, uh, our one aim. So, uh, talking about that one, how to make the big catalyst? Now we are targeting snail cell. This one, this snail cell. I bring it from Mizoram, we grind it, we do calcination, we, calcination means heating at very high temperature, then we try to produce calcium oxide, as I mentioned with my pointer. Uh, as you know, cell cell is made of calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate can be converted to calcium oxide, which is a very strong gas that can be useful as a catalyst in this biodiesel conversion, triglycerides to uh, by diesel. So what we do is that we calcine this one, we heat this one at very high temperature and we, we try to get calcium oxide here. This is a very strong base uh, for this conversion and can be used as a low cost catalyst because basically a snail cell is uh, free of cost. No one sells a snail cell. So this is basically a cost free uh, material. So if you use the cost free material, the by diesel production would be can be done at a cheaper price, at a cheaper rate. Uh, and finally, it is obvious that the cost of biodiesel will be cheaper. So this is our one work that has been published in RSC Advance in way back in 2018. We are still working on this one. So this is this is what is happening here. If you heat it to 400 degrees Celsius, if you don't heat natural snail cell, it is consists mainly of calcium carbonate here. And if you heat it at a temperature, now you see almost all are round. All these are round. This basically means these are all calcium oxide. So we can use this calcium oxide as a catalyst in by this production. So we can do this. Here, this is more of a chemistry uh, work. I'll not discuss about this one. So we'll try to see the morphology, the the, the physical appearance of our catalyst. As you can see, these are rounded. Why this is important? Because if there, if it is for us, we always we understand that this catalyst, uh, the catalyst will, uh, this will be a good catalyst. Because as we have more surface area and more pores, the active sites are more exposed to the reaction mixture, so the reaction is always faster. So we try to look the morphology of a catalyst, the physical appearance of a catalyst. We just try to understand what we can expect out of this catalyst, and we see the surface area as well. But this is the kind of isotherm. This shows that this is mesopores. It means that it has lots of pores inside that. We have lots of pores inside the catalyst. So we can expect that this will be a good catalyst for this kind of conversion. So this is uh, this is the effect of calcination temperature. As we increase the calcination temperature, we can see that 
the budget yield increase from 10 to 98. So while preparing the catalyst, it's required to understand the uh, nature of the catalyst, the uh, porosity, surface area, and, and the chemical composition of the catalyst. So this is how we characterize our uh, FEM, fatty acid methylester. This basically is uh, biodiesel. Uh, this is the formula to calculate the conversion percentage. Here we have, as I pointed out here, this red circle, red over circle. This is the triglyceride. This shows that these are all made of triglyceride. Basically, they are vegetable oil. But when you do reaction with calcium oxide, the snail cell, now we don't see anything in this region at around four. So this shows that all these things has converted to something else. So this is the new peak. We don't see this peak here, and but in the final product it is coming here. This shows that this has been converted to this one. So now we can we are sure that our biodiesel, uh, our triglyceride vegetable oil now converted to diesel. So we are convinced that we can successfully prepare biodiesel using our snail cell catalyst. This is our another walk uh, where we use Musa Akumi Tapil as a catalyst for biodiesel production. So uh, carrying on with that, uh, our dream of uh, selling a biodiesel at a very low cost, again now we shall get Musa Akumi Ta, which in Mizo we call it Baibalha. Uh, this pill as can be used as a catalyst uh, for in the conversion of uh, uh, vegetable soybean oil to and methanol to biodiesel. So the content is different here. The content, the chemical composition of uh, our catalyst is different. In the past, uh, at least when we use nail cell, the active catalyst is potassium oxide. But here in this case, we have potassium oxide. As you know, potassium is potassium is also a very strong base. So our target is just to get catalyst which is highly basic calcium either calcium oxide or potassium oxide will do the same kind of work so as we can see that this has uh, uh, 65 percent calcium uh, 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 potassium oxide so this can also be used as a strong best at least for this by this conversion this is the morphology more or less the same thing with the previous one Uh, reusability test. Now again, we tested the reusability of our catalyst. As you can see in the first, uh, with the virgin catalyst, we are getting around 98%. But in the fourth catalyst, at least we use the yield of biodiesel is hardly 52%. This is one of the drawbacks of uh, naturally occurring catalyst, which is biodiesel conversion. In most cases, we want it to be 100% uh, retained. It, we want it. In simple words, in the second round, third round, and fourth round, we always want it to be 98%, 98%, and 98%. So, so but here it has drastically decreased to 52%. This is uh, the one of the drawbacks of using our catalyst. So we are trying to develop a kind of system, uh, method where we can always retain the, uh, the basic size of this uh, catalyst. Uh, this work has already been published. I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, the sustainable protocol for uh, production of biodiesel by certification of soybean oil using banana trunk as as a heterogeneous catalyst. Uh, this was uh, this is also more or less the same thing with the previous one. So I'm not talking about this one. Now we are targeting orange steel. Uh, why we are targeting orange steel? Orange steel is also kind of biomass which is readily available everywhere. So it is easily available everywhere. So, you know, we can get it at a very cheap price. It is uh, reachable by everyone. It is also very cheap cost. It is available everywhere around the globe, even in Mizoram. So it can be e easily used. It is quite practical to use, so to say. So we are targeting orange steel as we burn it, then we do biodiesel synthesis from soybean oil again, and this work has already been published in 2019, just a few years back, as you can see. Now, our next target is 
mango peel, mango peel as as a catalyst for biodiesel production at room temperature. As you know, this all these catalysts have different morphology, so you cannot just say that all the every natural product will be uh, active for this uh, synthesis. So we need to see the basicity, we need to see the chemical composition, so and so, and after that only you can try it uh, for biodiesel synthesis. Again, here the recoverability is quite less. It is not 58, 59% yield in the fifth satellite circle. So this is also kind of pending uh, what we have, how we can uh, try to, how we can retain the basicity of this catalyst. Basically, this uh, K2O and calcium oxide, they are soluble, not really soluble, but partially soluble in this methanol and glycerol. That is the main problem we have. We have been working on this field also, but there has not been, you know, a kind of uh, a success uh, uh, till today. And we are still working on this work. This has been recently published in 2020. Uh, this is our GC spectra of the soya bean oil. This is the chemical composition of the soya bean oil. All this oil, the soya bean oil, if it is grown in Mizoram, or if it is grown in Assam, or if it is grown in Delhi, the chemical composition is always different. That is why you need to identify each and every uh, component of this uh, soya bean oil. So, this soya bean oil, we use it from Silchar Market. We identify what are the chemical composition of this, uh, 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 this soya bean oil. There are 12 uh, tapping components in this biodiesel. The main component mainly are always 8 is to 2. Eight, 18 is to 2. 18 is to 2 are methyl oxide decanoid and uh, methyl, methyl 9 cis, 12 cis oxide decanoid. 2 means there are 2 double bonds in this uh, compound. 3 means there are 3 double bonds in this compound, so and so. 18 basically shows that there are 18 carbon in this uh, compound. So after preparing the biodiesel, what we do is that we try to see the uh, physical chemical properties of, of our biodiesel that it can be used in diesel engine or not. This is very important. Even if you prepare a kind of biodiesel from vegetable oil, until less it satisfies all these uh, standards, it cannot be used as a biodiesel. So what we have to do is that after the synthesis of biodiesel, we have to see that this can be used as a uh, in diesel engine. So we have to uh, measure it against the standard measure. Here we have American Society of Materials at, uh, of uh, Testing and Material. This standard is already there, so we need to see that whether our biodiesel product is within this range or not. So this is the ASTM standard. Uh, ASTM standard 0.8 we have here, our soybean is uh, 0.41. Here we have 23. So our biodiesel is much uh, better than this one. So this is the range, so and so forth. It should be less than or equal to 47, but this is a little bit higher than this one, higher than the desired one. So almost everywhere it satisfies the ASTM standard. So we believe that this can be successfully used in the digital engine. But this is costlier than by uh, diesel, so no one uh, is unlikely to buy uh, by diesel. We need to bring down the cost. How we attempt to bring down the cost of this year is low for low cost speed stock. In the first place, I have mentioned that we try to bring down the cost of the catalyst. Now our second target, our second aim is to use low cost speed stock. Speed stock means the starting material we use to convert it to by diesel. Suppose if you use soya bean oil, soya bean oil is much cheaper, uh, much costlier compared to zero uh, power oil or whatever. Why people target zero power oil or palm oil? Yes, you know, palm oil is also cheaper than soya bean oil. So we try to target the low cost cutting material to prepare this uh, biodiesel. Now our second target is the low cost biodiesel. So, so what we do in this uh, research line is that uh, 
uh, stick in the wall of the this one in the of the container, then you can easily scan this one. You can separate out the cadmium easily from the reaction mixture. So this is why we use this catalyst for this uh, reaction. So we functionalize it with this one. Then we are making a magnetic catalyst. Our main uh, our driving force, our main aim is just to make solid uh, at least uh, nano catalyst, which can be easily recoverable using this FeTO4. Now we have the sulfonic acid like the previous one we have, we see. Now just we anchor it with that FeTO4 just to make it magnetic and easily recoverable. So this is another work uh, where we have, this is the magnet core, uh, this is the core magnet. And this is the sulfonic group. And this, uh, because of this magnet, we can easily recover this at least. This is the how this reaction has been done. Now we target orange peel. Uh, this is uh, published just a few months back in this year. More or less the same thing. I'm not going to discuss about this one. Now we use microwave assisted glycerol carbonate. As I mentioned, this. Uh, Glycerol is a kind of waste material, so we are trying to make use of it by converting it to salt. Now we use microwave assisted synthesis. Microwave assisted synthesis, as you know, it is very fast. So if you do the reaction in microwave, it will take hardly five to ten minutes. Uh, if you do compression and heating, it will take maybe two three hours. So we try to use microwave assisted synthesis, so the reaction is very uh, very straightforward and very fast. So now. We are trying to convert this uh, bio, we try to extract biofuel from natural waste resources. This is the kitchen cell. We try to uh, we try to extract the oil from here. We try to do carboxylation with this one. The carboxylation uh, simply means that removal of this car uh, carboxylic group to uh, remove carbon dioxide. So this basically is just a removal of this carboxylic acid group. This has been published in 2017. Uh, this uh, work, we have seen it uh, from the publication, earlier publication of uh, organic letters. We simply try to uh, use this, adapt this method in this, uh, uh, what do you call it, the casino cell oil. So this is the reaction mechanism we have proposed, more or less similar with the previous work in the literature. Okay, uh, now uh, about to complete my lecture. This is my research group at NIT Hilter. Uh, uh, these two guys and one, they have already completed their PhD and this is about to complete. This is still working with me. This is a professor from IIT Mumbai and this lady has completed her PhD recently and she got an assistant professor job as well just a few months back. And these are my friends. This is my MSc project student in Cambridge University, Russell Matthew May, and this some are some of my lab mates. This guy is from Japan. This is from China, and PK and myself, and this is our cafeteria. Okay, thank you so much for your kind, uh, for your time, and for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your perspective presentation. It was very interesting listening to your lecture. And um, I think you were very much in a hurry because we still have plenty of time left uh, until the second session starts. But anyway, we will open the time for um, perhaps discussion if there is any. I'll check if there are any uh, questions posted in the comment box. If there is anyone who want to uh, pose any um, queries, questions, you may drop in your questions in the comment box. I will read them out for a resource person so that he can clarify your queries. Anyone who has questions may post it in the comment section. Most welcome to do that. I think everyone finds the presentation clear enough it's very crystal clear, so maybe they don't have any doubts to clarify also. <laughs> One of our audience has a question to 
raised. So let's just wait for it. I don't know if you can see the question, sir, but I'll read out for you. Um, when can we actually expect the future fuel, like what you had mentioned? What about the ongoing research in UK and the result? Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Actually, this research uh, has been highly pursued all around the globe. Best, uh, mainly in the, uh, this, uh, Thailand, Indonesia, Korea. This has been highly pursued. And as you know, you can, can, it has already been used in, even in USA, it is already running in the Road. So in India also it is, it is likely to hit the road very soon. Even, in, uh, even some Indian companies like Indian Oil, Bharat Petroleum, I guess, they have started uh, opening this oil depot, biodiesel oil depot. So it is already in uh, real life practice. I do not exactly know when it will happen in Mizoram, but it is likely to happen very soon. Uh, Biodiesel oil also has gone down drastically these days when well, the price of petroleum oil has increased so fast. So now the prices are comparable. So it's likely to hit well, the market very soon, even in Mizora. Even though I don't know the exact date. So, you know, something we can expect in the near future. We find it very informative. Yeah, uh, even we have uh, this one startup company in Mizora. Myself and my wife, we have a startup company in Mizoram that has been incubated in Agriculture University, Telesi. So okay. our plan is to put into practice, to use this biodiesel by this year, end of this year at least. So yeah, maybe we can just drive that vehicle with this biodiesel we have prepared in, uh, during this year, hopefully. Mm. Anyone else who would like to? At Cambridge University, now we are preparing catalysts from glucose. The paper is now communicated, so hopefully we'll get a positive response. Okay. Something different from what we have done in India. In India, we basically use, as I have mentioned, the waste material. Mm -hmm. But in Cambridge, what we try to do is that we try to use naturally abundant material again. Yeah. But what we try to do is that we want to make the Cambridge, which can be recycled many times. So the one we make in Cambridge University, you can recycle at least five times without much loss in its activity. Thank you for sharing that with us, sir. It's also very interesting and innovative steps that you have taken out there.